night, Nikki Haley's presidential campaign got a big boost when former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie dropped out. Haley and Christie, you know, both appealing to more moderate Republican voters, so it would make sense for many Christie supporters to jump ship and join Team Haley. But here's the important question. Okay, fair enough, but does he have a real shot at not just New Hampshire, but actually beating Trump? In a moment, I'll be talking to a former RNC bigwig who was a Haley doubter, now changing her tune. Remember, in politics, it's not just poll numbers, but momentum that matters. And when it comes to momentum, Haley has a lot of it. The two most recent polls from New Hampshire have her still trailing Trump, but she's making major progress before Chris, this is before Christie dropped out. That's critical in these polls. She was down 16 to Trump in a new Emerson College poll. CNN had her losing by about seven. According to the average of polls, Haley down by about 11. But here's the important point. Compare those numbers to the same polls just in November. Emerson College had Haley down 31. CNN had her trailing by 22. It's clear she's closing the gap. And while you can't just, you can't just add Christie voters to Haley, you can expect she'll get a lot of them. And in those same polls, most recently, Christie had 11 and 12 percent. But still, Chris Christie doesn't think she has it, or maybe he's just mad. As he made clear on a hot mic yesterday. Yeah, I mean, look, she spent 68 million so far, just on TV. Spent 68 million so far, 59 million by DeSantis, and we spent 12. I mean, who's punching above their weight and who's getting a return on their investment, you know? And she's going to get smoked. And you and I both know it. She's not up to this. Haley responded to Christie this morning on Fox News. Look, it's, it's not a surprise. These fellows have been talking like that from the beginning. We focus on relationships with the people on the ground and gaining their trust. And that's why you see this has become a two-person race with me and Donald Trump. And, you know, while everybody else wants to discount us, I'll tell you, we keep moving and we're moving for a reason. So how real is this, right? I've been very clear that I think any candidate whose name is not Biden or Trump should be taken seriously because so many Americans don't want that choice. But let's ask former RNC spokesperson Liz Mayer. She served as online communications director at the Republican National Committee and had been dismissive of Haley's chances. Thanks very much for coming on the program. Appreciate it. All right. So are you changing your view on this? I am a bit, yes. I mean, when Haley entered the race, I thought she was out of her mind, absolutely out of her mind. I thought there was no chance that, except for maybe in South Carolina, her own state, that she would get better than 5 percent really anywhere. And maybe it'd be like 10 percent in South Carolina, right? I thought she was completely nuts. I thought it was completely untenable for her to run to run for, against Trump as a former cabinet member in the Trump administration. And it appears that, uh, you know, political strategists frequently are only about 10 percent more accurate or more right than a poo-flinging monkey. And I'm willing to cop to that. I think at the moment, uh, I wouldn't say that she's likely to win the nomination. But I do think that there is a chance that she can do it. And I think that that path is less narrow than I would have thought even like two weeks ago. So, so lay, yeah, it, things are lay it out for me. How does it happen? As a practically sort of realistically, how could it happen? Well, so she's got to win New Hampshire, right? I mean, I think that's the bottom line. Um, if we see a result in Iowa that is surprising, which doesn't mean Trump losing, but it could mean DeSantis overperforming and getting really close to Trump. Uh, it could also mean DeSantis doing really badly and Haley doing surprisingly well, which if you watch the CNN focus group this morning of their debate viewers, actually looks pretty feasible out of 10 people only 10 people in Iowa. Uh, only one was committed to caucusing for DeSantis. Two were committed to caucusing for Nikki Haley. So DeSantis, in order to actually do anything there, he would have to actually move quite a lot of people who are on the fence between him and Trump. Now, he might do that. But if either of those two things happen, I think that changes the dynamics of the race and it gives her more momentum. And it also draws into question how much Trump really has this locked up. You then go to New Hampshire. And she's already moving up in New Hampshire. Um, we don't know what polling has been right there, but a lot of the polls seem to have underestimated how many independents will vote in New Hampshire. Those people are very attracted to Chris Christie and Nikki Haley. Chris Christie is no longer in this. And I think it's reasonable to conjecture that while only about 50 percent of Ron DeSantis's voters would move over to Nikki Haley, I think probably as many as 90 percent of Chris Christie's could move over to Nikki Haley. Thank you for watching. 
Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.